We don't have time. I mean, seriously, we don't. Climate change, the sixth mass extinction, and now this freaking pandemic. Are you already tired of seeing videos, facts, figures, fake news? Well, yeah. Hmm. Well, me, I'm personally, I'm actually haunted by PowerPoint slides from cautious scientists. PowerPoint is a no-go. Show me catastrophe. Apocalypse. Doom. Bring it on, academia. I can actually make the most glorious science videos for you. I mean, seriously now. I think one of the biggest issues we actually have is that many conspiracy theory videos work with a strong audiovisual language. If I may add my point of view from the science perspective. It is at the very core of our ethos to remain calm and rational, even more in the face of imminent danger. One cannot allow our emotions to cloud our judgments. Simplifications must be avoided. We can use video to record our lectures and get our key messages out there. Really? I mean, I mean, really? Video is a visual medium. If you don't have something to show, why is it a video then? I'm aware of the endless discourse you actually have on science and film and in the subjectivity. Using more visuals for science may sound contradictory at the word strong academic culture at first. But if you dive a little bit deeper into each of the academic fields, you actually see that most of them using images anyway. And I don't mean statistics only, but literally taking a perspective. Using the visual as an argument to prove, give evidence, to show something. Historically, there's always been a strong connection between science and film, since the early silver cells technology was actually invented. But unfortunately, we don't see that many fruitful collaboration between scientists and filmmakers today anymore. May it be because everybody thinks they can do it on their own. But for many people, it just doesn't work. Right. People seem to have a hard time listening to us. It may just be because of mental laziness in a hyper-complex world. It's also very tiring to deal with cognitive dissonances, which science media can create. But we must be careful not to break the audience's minds into tiny fragments. Or maybe they just don't listen anymore. Because they already believe climate change is a hoax, other life forms than humans are overrated, and COVID-19 doesn't exist. A distorted overtone window of science videos. Well, one thing we know for sure is that the current crisis of trust actually hits at a time where science shows major threats to the web of life on Earth. So how can videos, or in general audiovisual media, negotiate between science, false belief and the public? Well, let me first start at the thing we call actually truth in videos. Godard's classic statement is so provoking because it's actually semantically utterly incorrect. Moving images are an audiovisual illusion and as such they can't be true or false anyway. What we see and what we hear at the same time gets interconnected into a whole experience, although they don't maybe belong together. Even if I tell you at this very moment to not connect what you see and what you hear at the same time, you won't be able to. So one of the fundamental superpowers of videos is to somehow use an audiovisual rhetoric to convince somebody. Even if a misconception or a false belief is already deep-seated, we may be able to change that if we create a very strong aha moment in the audience. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. So you mean the famous aha moment, Archimedes supposedly took a bath when he came across a mind-blowing idea and he ran out naked through the streets. So you're saying that the public should go out running naked on the streets when watching a revealing science video? Yes, I mean, I mean, no. Um, studies actually show that it's actually easier to hold on to your old beliefs than adjusting your mindset to a new view. 
Misinformation and misconception is actually deeply rooted in our minds once we're convinced by something. So the actual breaking of misconception is a huge shift in our thinking that running naked through the streets might quite be appropriate actually. Even further, if misinformation gets connected to strong emotions, what we observe at the moment with COVID-19 topics out there, it gets much, much more difficult to change those beliefs. Unlearning beliefs is always hard. In our journey towards becoming a scientist, we have to overcome a lot of so-called threshold concepts. Each scientific field has transformative concepts where a scientist starts to see the world differently. They are irreversible and create a shift in values, feelings and attitudes. Part of our scientific culture is also to disagree, to debate, to discuss about our worldviews. But we try not to let those out into the public. Nobody will believe us anymore, I guess. Such reflective processes are thus kept away from public science communication. Well, indeed, public science videos actually build upon a worldview which has a fixed and known entity. So results are communicated in a dichotomy. Something is increasing, decreasing, a variable is absent or present, or false and true. So there may be this unspoken rule that we assume that the audience is not capable of getting more complex information. The painful truth is that it's in the nature of science to be ridiculously complex and quite uncertain. There are and always have been bizarre messages, sometimes contradictory statements. And now today it gets much more visible in these uncertain times. Fake news actually drives upon unspoken truths. So there's nothing more helpful for the spread of an over-the-top crazy conspiracy theory when there is an ordinary but officially ignored story behind that. Maybe where elites conspire. Reinforcements incoming! We need more fact-checking and verification strategies to prove if a fact is truth or false. If something sounds cheesy or is overdramatic, ask about it, investigate, critically reflect on it. How else can we get a responsible and democratic decisions otherwise in politics? I personally doubt that fact-checking will actually solve the problem at all. Well, if an individual is already trapping on alternative facts and distrusts society, you will only fit into the prejudice. It's actually called the backfire effect. It is a globalist media propaganda, so the opposite is true, and my previous beliefs were right. Well, well, the wave of trust is already broken through those in separate filter bubbles. So even if you're a highly privileged person, you can actually feel pretty easy neglected or overseen, and somehow part of a minority. And actually, this is what conspiracy videos often drive upon on. So, to find a common enemy. And academia, well, whew, it suits very nice, huh? Asterix and Obelix fighting against the Roman university emperor. But coming back to my original point, the world is still burning and we'll soon reach a point where there's no return. And scientists clearly know more than they actually say. They even calculated the emissions from rabbit poo. I mean, seriously, they did. But they often don't bring that across. Look, scientific writing is an art form in itself and it needs a lot of practice. And so does filmmaking. So use the kind of knowledge. Be as precise as you would be with terminologies in your own scientific work. So when you talk about adaptation and maybe also paradigm shifts, hopefully in climate change, you're also very specific. We need to do the same in videos. So this is on one hand. On the other hand, it should be as if you would sit at a campfire and listen to a good story. Science communication videos are nice, but I can't. If I don't perform competitively in my citation index, I will drop out of my academic career. I need to get the funding for my next position. Otherwise, I will never get tenure track. Not yet, unfortunately. But scientific culture is also fluid and paradigm shift happens sometimes. So you may even get your future professorship because you created science videos which had an impact on society. Imagine you can actually co-design, you can co-create. And if you acknowledge each other's knowledge and skills, you can really probably transform something. Well, 
I think we have to decide on a, on a key message. Okay, are you ready? All right. To regain a certain trust in public, science media communication needs to increase their transparency and visibility. Science videos should not only show the results, but also how scientific processes work, how knowledge is created. Video is another language, it's an audiovisual language. Hence, we need scientists and filmmakers to work together to collaborate. Create a global organized movement against misinformation with direct action and mutual trust, mutual aid. <laughs>